How many of you ever prayed, Lord, I need more power, God, please, more power? I have. But then the Lord said to me, where are you going to get it? Because you have all the power. Where are you going to get more power other than me? The living, resurrected Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who separated time and history by his life, by his, not just his teachings, but his miracles and casting out demons and raising the dead to life and sharing the good news of the gospel, the good news that God no longer alienates us from himself, but has provided himself as a sacrifice, a substitutionary death that he would die on the cross. He rose from the dead. This is not a religion. This is a relationship with God Almighty. Hallelujah. He has put within you a miraculous force. Miraculous. Miraculous. You have power as a child of the Most High God. It's the force that created the heavens and the earth dwells in you. That's how much power you have in your life. And you have to, as a child of God, learn to tap in to that power. Learn to tap into that resource that you have as a child of the Most High God. That's what I want to look at right now because it's time to turn it up. It's time to turn up your life in the power of God. It's time to lay aside complacency or sleepiness or, or just, just a pathetic attitude towards your life. This is your life. And God saved you for a purpose and a plan and He hasn't rejected you. You are accepted, you are highly, I'm looking at blessed people today. I'm looking at filled with the Holy Spirit of God, people. And God wants us to know this in Jesus' name. In Romans 8, 11, it says the same supernatural strength that raised Christ from the dead is the same Holy Spirit that lives in you and gives life to your bodies the same way. The same way Jesus experienced you can experience this as a child of God. He saved you for a purpose. And if we could just get the scratch of the surface of this, I will see all of you living victoriously. I will see you walking in high places with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the glory of God. The other day I was driving up the road, I got this jabbing pain in my body. I mean, it was like, what is this? And I said, in the name of Jesus, you have no authority here, leave. It was gone just like that. The enemy will try to hit you with stuff, but you're a child of the Most High God. Where are you gonna find any greater power than being a born again, filled with the Spirit, child of the Most High God? You won't find it in Buddhism. You won't find it worshiping Muhammad or Moses or anybody else. You won't find it in a Shindu shrine or a Muslim mosque. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody gets to the Father but by me. You have access to the power of the Most High God right now, and it's time to turn it up, turn it up in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We have wonderful television monitors, great lighting. We have a great sanctuary. But if you don't turn it on, it's useless. If it's all shut off, there's nothing there. You know, when you watch a movie, you shut the music off, the movie loses its romance, it loses excitement, because God created music, it's emotional, and that's why we worship our God. The Bible says, play skillfully unto the Lord with a loud noise, but you have to plug in. You have to plug in your resources to the power of the Most High God who lives in you. God wants you to turn it on, and He wants you to turn it up. It's time to turn up the volume. It's time to realize that you have in you the glorious power of God, that you're not what you used to be. You've been delivered from what you used to be. You're a new creation in Christ. Hebrews 10, 39, but we do not belong to those who shrink back and are destroyed, but those who have faith and are saved. Faith today. God wants you to engage your faith in the power of the resource that dwells in you. I'm convinced, church, it's time to turn up your power more than you ever have. The death toll in Turkey right now is over 28,000 people from that earthquake. And I want you to know that Jesus said there would be an increase of earthquakes before he would come in diverse places. It means in big places. And that's what we've seen. 
And we've seen an, such an increase in just the last three years of magnitude earthquakes that are beyond our imagination. And God wants you to know these are birth pains on the planet that Jesus is getting ready to come for his church. And we are called to be watching and be ready for him because we are his bride. And he loves us today. He loves you today. And the Bible tells us to prepare ourselves for the Lord will come in an hour you think not. Today's Super Bowl Sunday. Yeah. Okay, listen. Ra ra we. Listen. Do you think those players last night were out partying till 2 a.m., drinking, carousing, carrying on, driving their fancy cars around to all hours of the night? Absolutely not. They were preparing mentally, physically, and spiritually for a game they want to win. And that's what we're called to do, to prepare, to prepare mentally, spiritually, and physically for the game we are in right now. It's real. It's alive. There is real, a real demonic force of influence in this world today, and we're not to be caught off guard by any of it in Jesus' name. If we're not seeing miracles in our lives, it isn't God's fault. It's our fault because he has provided the ultimate miracles for us. He isn't the one who is limiting us. We are limiting ourselves. And a lot of times we don't want to hear that kind of news because it doesn't sound like good news, but it really is because it wakes us up to say, hey, I want to tap into those resources that God has for me. If you are the one who is keeping the lid on the power of your life, you're the one that can take the lid off. Nobody else can do it for you. I can't do it for you. I can motivate you to try to do so, but you have to do this. You have to tap into the source. You have to take the lid off and allow God to do what he wants to do. You can make a quality decision to increase the power in your life starting today. Stop being defeated. Stop being complacent. Stop being stagnant. Rise up, child of God. Rise up to what he has for you. Joel chapter 10, 3 verse 10 says, let the weak say I'm strong. Psalm 107 verse 2 says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Proverbs 24, 10. If you fail under pressure, your strength is small. We're not to fail under pressure. Pressure is a part of life. But we have control of the pressure cooker temperature. We set the tone. We set what needs to happen and not happen in our lives. A lot of people are blaming things on the devil that they did to themselves. I mean, blaming God what they've done to themselves. Or they want to blame the devil. Really, a lot of times it's our problem. We, the devil can only be in one place at one time. But uh, yes, there's a demonic host of wickedness in high places. And we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But we are aware of what is happening around us. We're called to turn it on, turn it up. Why? Because your God is always on. God is always on. When you're sleeping, he's on. When you are in a weird situation, he's on. When you are unexpectedly hit with something. God is on. He's on the present. He's right there. He's with you at all places, all times. His power is always on. It's turned up, made available for you 2,000 years ago at that day of Pentecost. The Holy Spirit power is what you have that nobody else has right now. Come on, church. He hasn't turned it off since. He's just waiting for us to get fully tuned in to turn on his power and turn it up. You got to get tuned in. You got to get plugged into what God has for you in Jesus name. This Thursday, we're going to do a baptism. How many can make it to the baptism that need to be baptized? All right. Glory to God. Okay, good. We're going to have a baptism during the worship time. We're going to have a baptism. But God is waiting for us to get with the program and start doing the works that Jesus did. Even greater works. You are called to do the works Jesus did. Think about this for a moment. You're called to do this. He sent you out. My question is, are you doing it? We got to do it. Listen to what Jesus said in John 14, 12. I tell you the truth. That means he's not lying. Anyone who believes in me will do the same works I have done, even greater works because I'm going to my father. Do you see what Jesus said? That's a promise for you. That's for me. That means I can do this. The problem is we've kept waiting on him when he's waiting for us. 
We're waiting on waiting for God for this miracle. You are the miracle. Step into the place that God has for you and claim that miracle. Find a passage of scripture, whatever you're going through for that situation. Claim it. Say it. Say it again. And believe what God says. Church, Ezra chapter 10, verse 4. God said, arise, for it is your task. God is with you. Be strong and do it. This is your task to do what God's called you to do at your work, at your home, at your school, wherever he's called you to partake of life, it's a place. If you're church, the miracles are there for you as a child of God. Sometimes we think, well, I'm just doing Sunday school ministry. That's powerful. You're influencing a life because somebody influenced your life when you were little. You can think, well, I'm just doing this. There's no just doing this. Everything God's called you to do that you do is amazing. It's blessed by God. It's impacting to the world and it impacts your environment. And John, 1 John 5, 4 says, everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. We've overcome the world because our faith is substantial. It's not based on, people will call it blind faith. There's no blind faith in Christianity. I see where Jesus lived. I see where he walked. I see where he was buried. I see where he rose from the dead. I see where Moses walked. I see all the archaeological digs that have ever been dug have been reinforced in the scripture. There are real places, real times of history. They are things that happen that are real. It's not some philosophical weirdness. It's truth that God's word is alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. When you turn it on and turn it up, you know that God is beside you. He's with you. I love what God told, him, told Moses in Exodus chapter 14, verse 13. But Moses answered to the children of Israel, do not be afraid, be brave, and you will see the salvation of your Lord today. These Egyptians will never bother you again, for the Lord will fight for you, and you won't have to do a thing. And the Lord said to Moses, why do you keep calling out to me for help? Get these guys and move forward. I love that. God says, these things you're crying out for help for, you have the power, get up and get going. Get up and start doing what God's called you to do. If he's laid something for you to do on your heart in church, get up and do it. Start happening. Make it happen. When he's giving you something, a word for somebody, speak it. You have this authority as the children of the Most High God. Amen? The problem is, despite what the Bible says, most Christians don't actually think they could ever do what Jesus did. And right now you might be thinking, well, well, maybe you can do that, but I don't think I could ever do that. I'm telling you, you can do this. You can do it. All right, come on, church. After all, he is divine. He's the Holy Son of God. And you would think he could do these things. That's why Jesus did not. Did you know that Jesus did not operate in any power that we, don't ha that we already have? He, he operated in the power that you and I have. He operated in that power. And we think sometimes, well, he had this great anointing, anointing, God have mercy, anointing. He had this great anointing. You know, I'm cracking up inside. That was really good. He had this great anointing, and he was able to do what he did because, yes, in fact, he was God the Son. But listen to what Philippians 2 7 says. It says, When Jesus came to earth, he stripped himself of his divine privileges. He laid aside the rights of deity and ministered as a man. Think about that for a moment. He, lay aside, he laid aside all the powerful deity attributes of who he was and who he is. And he ministered as a man. This was powerful. Because what is the secret power of his anointing? This astounding power. It's found in John 3.34. Jesus said, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, proclaiming the Father's own message. For God gives the gift of the Spirit without measure generously. Jesus was speaking the Father's words. And this is what God wants you to start doing. Speaking God's words. Speaking the Father's words. They will not return void unto our Heavenly Father. When you say what He says, there's where the action is. There's where the power is. There's where the resource is. According to that verse, the reason why Jesus was able to operate in unlimited power because He spoke the words of God. 
when he said, this flesh is not he who speaks. It's my Father in me. It's my Father's words. I'm echoing him. And you're called to echo his words because that's where your power is. Jesus didn't speak words of faith and then words of doubt the next moment. He stayed in faith. You have to stay in faith. You have to stay consistency. The miracle is in consistency. It's in staying in faith, staying in power, remaining in your peace no matter what comes against you, remaining in the stance as a child of the Most High God. Jesus spoke God's word in John 8, 28. As my father has taught me, he said, I speak these things. So you must understand what the word is. It's God breathe. Created for every life occasion. There's, there's nothing that is not in the word of God for your situation, whatever you're facing. If it's lack, he shall supply all of your needs. That's what he said. If there's sickness, by his stripes you were healed. If there's powerlessness, you have the power of the Holy Spirit. If you feel like God could not come through for you, that's a smokescreen lie of the enemy. God comes through for all of his people. Doesn't matter who you are. Doesn't matter how you were raised. It doesn't matter who your parents were. A lot of people today want to blame their parents for everything. Blame yourself if you're walking in lack. Blame yourself if you're, if you're stuck. It's up to you to get up and get out to do what God's called you to do. There's an old statement, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. True. And as a child of God, if it's meant to be, it's up to you, yes, but the power of the Spirit that dwells in you. The Word itself is what God says has the power. Many seem to think that because there's opinions today on the Word of God. Well, Jesus didn't really mean what He said. Ooh, I hate that one more than anything. I will turn off somebody in a second if they say that's not what Jesus really meant. Jesus did not have a commentator following him around. Well, what he really meant was he didn't really mean you can say that mountain and be cast into the sea. <laughs> Listen, that's just figurative speech. No, it's not. Jesus said it. He meant it. What he said, he meant. And Jesus never went against his word. He kept his word. And his word could be trusted. Amen. His word was true. His word is true. Nothing worse than somebody telling you something that isn't true. But Jesus told the truth. He told the truth. He is the truth. Isaiah 55, 11, It is the same word that I've sent out. It will always produce fruit. It will accomplish what I want it to do. It will prosper everywhere I send it. Isaiah 45, 23, I have sworn to myself that my word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness. It shall not return unto me void. It will make every tongue confess and believe who I am. Church, today, you possess something that the world is longing for. It's not found in the Smithsonian. It's found in the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. It's found in the word of God. The Bible says in Titus 2, 1, 2 says, in the hope of eternal life, which God cannot lie, promised before time began. He promised it before time began. You have a timeless word that you're holding in your laps today in the scripture. Like it or not, everyone's integrity, including God's, is judged on the basis of whether they keep their word or not. If God did not keep his word, he could not be trusted. You say, how can you judge God? I'm judging what he said from what he said. Church, listen, God keeps his word. He didn't set up a criteria that said he could overrule his word. No, he is the word. He does not overrule himself. He is God. He says, I've sworn to myself. You know, people today, I swear on a stack of Bibles, man, this happened. Right away, don't believe what that person's saying. Because first of all, they don't have a stack of Bibles, and they probably never even read it. I love that when they put their hand on the Bible, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God. Yeah, I think. Because they don't even know what that represents. They're swearing to God. God and his word are one, not because we say so, it's because he says so. Either you believe him or you don't. This is how it works. Either you believe what God has said or you're not believing it. He never changes his word himself. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. That's such good news. Amen? He always, always honors his word. So if you have something you're dealing with, 
He's going to honor that word. Amen. Can somebody say amen today? Hallelujah. Turn it on. Turn it up. God is always on. Number four, his word came first. This is powerful. This is powerful. Come on, church. God's word came first. Since God is all powerful, his word is all powerful. And he does back up everything he says. I want you to look at Genesis chapter one, verses one through three, because his word contains creative power. Since he is creator in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and the earth was out form and void and darkness was upon the face of the dirt, earth and the dirt and the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters and God said, let there be light, <coughs> light. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Notice God said he had created all things, but until he spoke, things did not happen. He spoke it. God said, let there be light. Notice that the Spirit of God was moving before God spoke. Nothing happened until God spoke. His words are powerful. His words are righteous. They're true. Creation did not take place until God released his words of faith. Listen to what it says in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen are made of things which do not appear. Science used to mock that until they discovered the atom. You're made of things that don't appear. Atoms and molecules. And think about God's power. Everything in this material creation, everything you can see, touch, smell, taste, came, to exi came into existence because of his word. The word is powerful. I want you to get the word in your heart, mind, and soul. That means God's word is the permanent substance of all matter. The word created mass. His word spoke it into existence. Do you believe his word? Do you believe his word still has power over natural, physical things in this world? Do we believe that today? Do you believe that the word that God created dirt, your physical body was made from, has enough power to heal your body? He made your body out of dirt. Therefore, he has the power to heal your body because you're no longer dirt. You're a living soul made in the creation and the image of God, body, soul, and spirit. Do you believe the word that spoke gold and silver over this planet, the entire wealth of the earth, has enough power to supply your resources? Isn't God a supplier of our resources? Of course. God's word is eternal. He is sovereign. He is supreme. It cannot be changed. Unfortunately, people try to say, did God really mean what he said? If God did not mean what he said, all we have here today is a philosophical, philosophy, sociological club, a moose lodge. We don't have anything. If anybody replaces the power of God for what it says, they have nothing. It's just another club on the planet. We're not that, though. We're not some philosophical or religious idea. What is your religion? Uh, I believe in Jesus Christ who changed world history and separated time. What matters, what matters is what do you believe? In Psalm 119, verse 89, forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. It's settled. God said it, that settles it. Now it's up to you to believe it and receive it and watch it come to pass. It will come to pass. I don't care what it is. When you pray and you believe in your heart that God is able to do what he said he will do, it will happen. Jesus said that. In Mark chapter 31, verse 31, 13, verse 31, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So if you take something that's unchangeable, let's take something that's unchangeable and take something that's changeable and you take what is unchangeable and push it into changeable, what happens? That substance that is changeable will change. The substance that will not change won't change because it's immovable. God's word is immovable. So whatever you push it against, sickness, lack, hurt, depression, anxiety, that stuff has to move out of its way because God's word is powerful, stable, it is strong, and it is settled. Amen. Therefore, when you take the word of God and you apply it in faith, this temporal realm, the realm must confirm the word. It has to, because God's word shall not be moved, but he will move movable substance. 
Jesus understood that truth. He lived by it. And God is calling us to live by it. He had such faith in God's word that when he spoke, material creation bowed to him, knees bowed, and obeyed him. Demons fled. Diseases disappeared. Think, church, for a moment, death gave up its grip. Bread was multiplied. Wind stopped blowing. Waves ceased because Jesus took the authoritative, immovable word and applied it to those things that are moving and they had to stop. They had to leave. They had to obey. They had to submit. The power of God's word, Jesus is able to live and minister on this planet. This death-bound planet became completely free from all bondages because Jesus spoke the word. I'm telling you, once you start speaking the word, you're going to see things change in your life. It's about speaking it. Listen to what Jesus said in John 8, 31. If you continue in my word, somebody say my word. My word. Then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Most of us have given a religious meaning to the word disciple, and as a result, we're not walking in what disciple means disciple simply means follow after someone and become like them so we're his disciples and set free when we become like him because we're following him he's going to rub off on you have you ever seen couples that have been married for years they're in their 80s they always show up wearing the same stuff like they both have the same shirt on same pants same pin on their and you just think that's so cute but they've rubbed off on each other so much is that this is what happens. Okay, come on. Jesus wants us to continue his, in his word so you'll be like him. Zechariah 4, 6 says, It's not by might nor by power, but by his spirit, says the Lord. Yeah, we're wearing the same stuff today. That's funny. <laughs> God is good. God says, turn it up. I mean, turn it on, turn it up. God is always on. His word came first. And here's the big one. Number five, your words are containers of power. Your words, say my words, my words. Are, containers are containers of power, power. in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. Come on. <laughs> Understand that God's word is so profound in your life, it affects everybody around you. It conveys information. Your, your words convey information. People are talking about so many useless things today. Vain, empty chatter. I can't even believe Instagrammer and Ticker Talker and the stuff that these people are into. And they make such big deals about it. Oh, here's the food I ate. Isn't it cool? I always think, is that before or after you ate it? <laughs> Pastor, you've said that before, but we have some visitors. They never heard me say that. But when we think about what people are so wrapped up in and make such a big deal out of it, and everybody's their own movie star now. For what? Why? What is this doing to you? There's so many more valuable and more important things in your life to carry faith or fear, blessing or cursing, life or death. They're in your tongue. They're in your lips. The things you say. People speak so many idle words. And Jesus said this. He said, every idle word that a person speaks, they shall give an account of. Woo! Whoa. God is in heaven, you are on earth, therefore let your words be few. we got to realize the power of our words. What we can do, we can wreck someone's day with one sentence. But we can bless someone's day with one verse out of the word of God. With one thing, in Jesus' name. Hebrews 4.12 says, His word is quick or alive and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing, even dividing asunder the soul and the spirit. The fact that God's word actually contains power to bring itself to pass. Now, you can quote that verse and it sounds really cool. But it's not, I want you to get this in your mind. It's not the verse, that's not the power. It's not the statement that's the power. It's the one who's backing the statement. The one who's backing the verse. The one who says that his word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I've sent it forth to do. 
Isaiah 55, 11, my word shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish the things which I please. It shall prosper anywhere you send it. Every word of God that's ever been spoken and backed by faith is as powerful today as it was when it was first uttered. Wherever time, place that was uttered, it's still powerful. And when you tap into the source, when you believe the word of God, then your faith comes together with his faith and the power of the word is released and the Holy Spirit goes into action. The word explodes into the natural realm and moves things out of its way to the reality in your life that needs to be taken care of by it. Do you realize what you have today? Do you realize who you are today? You are more powerful than those guys in that Super Bowl field today. You're not in the grandstands. Yeah, yeah, rah, rah, wee. I bought a cube. I'm going to win. Is that what it's called, a cube? Square. Okay, you guys, I've just found out who's doing it. All right, that was, tri that was a trick question. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on, church. No more condemnation in Christ. I'm not condemning you. But when you realize how powerful the word is, the Bible says, whoever believes in their heart, confesses with their mouth, they shall be saved. You believed in your heart, you confessed with your mouth, boom, born again, in an instant. Miracle, biggest miracle that's ever happened in your life. You became a new creation in Christ, all things passed away. Hallelujah. So, the same as every word of God you speak has that same power. Do you know it has that same power? You believe the word, you spoke in faith, the Holy Spirit was released, you transformed your deadness to a reborn spirit recreated in the image of Jesus himself. That's the miracle. This is why when you came to Christ and said that verse, you were snatched out of the kingdom of darkness and now you are a son and daughter of the most high God. You're a friend of God. You're well favored, you're blessed, you're accepted by him. You have access. The words of God did the same for you as they did for Jesus when he said it is finished, it was made an end of. That which separated you from God was done with. Jesus spoke it and it happened. Start speaking it and watch it happen and stick with it. Ephesians 2, 6, his word demolished the devil's power over you and raised you up together in the Lord Jesus Christ to sit together in heavenly places. Turn it on, turn it up. God is always on, his word comes first. Your words are containers of power. Church, tap into this resource.